Okay, well, thank you so much for having us. Uh, we feel really honored. And um, yeah, if, if it's okay, I'd just like to start. Um, yep. Since your last album, Humanoid, was released in 2009, five years have passed. And ten years since Schrei. What has changed for you in those five years? And how was the process of, your co of recording different this time? Um, so I think the, the I think the main difference um, between all the previous albums and this album is that um, we produced everything on our own by ourselves. We had uh, an own home studio, uh, which we never had before. So um, the whole process was just very different because because this time we had no uh, time limit or anything like that. Puma. <laughs> We had no, yeah, we had no time limit or anything like that. So we were just, we were just, you know, in our studio and writing and making music without even knowing when we're going to put it out. So we just wanted, the goal with this album was just to, to make an album that we love and uh, to make songs that we, you know, love and feel comfortable with and just to make an album that we are totally happy with. And, um... But I feel like I feel like I mean everything changed. It's like mm -hmm. I mean, as you said, like the first our first album is like ten years old, and of course, like in ten years, a lot of stuff happens. I mean, we were fifteen, now we're twenty five, and and like the whole band, I think you know, develops and 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 you know everything changes in terms of songwriting, producing records, um, playing together as a band, growing as artists, as songwriters, as producers, like all that. All that stuff changes in ten years, and 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 I think the only guy that made no development at all is Georg, and um, and stay young and fresh. He's still he's still a bad bass player, and um, but except that, I think I think everything changed, and 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 that's I mean, but naturally, be, naturally, uh, yeah. But that's how it should be. I mean, uh, it would be horrible if like a band would stay the same and if we would still be as bad as we used to be with 15, like in terms of, you know, instruments and, and playing together as a band and stuff like that. So Yeah, but it's just really great how you guys have also stuck together over those years. I mean, a lot of bands, especially when they're so young, you don't really know what's ahead of you and you yeah. have had so much, uh, so many experiences. And why do you think the reason is that you're still together? Like, what is what binds you as a band? I think it's just because we grew up together. Yeah. I mean, we are we are just I mean friends, and and we, you know, we got to know each other because we li we lived in that small little town, and um, and they were the only other musicians in our age, and and so we just met up and we became friends. I mean, and when we were fifteen and we released the first record, we were already a band for five years. Yeah, yeah. Like we were together for five years, and so we just know each other for such a long time, and I feel like we are so we are such close friends, and um, I don't know, just like it's just like like a family I don't know it's just like for, for us it, I think we're never going to get to the point where we like fight so much that we can't look each other in the eye like we know exactly um, you know the line and when we cross the line with with each other and sometimes we want to do that and sometimes we don't and we can fight and then we can forget about it in the next seconds it's really like we are we are brothers and we know each other uh, very well so I think that's that's why it works out for such a long time yeah, and when your family <laughs> moved to LA and, and during your time in California, did you pursue um, any other artistic pursuits or did you just uh, focus on your music or did any one of you start a painting or something? <laughs> uh, um, no, I don't know. I think, I think we kind of like concentrated on music when, when Bim moved out to LA, but that's, that's the same thing. Like We moved out to LA and everybody keeps asking us like, Oh, how is that for the band? Because the other two guys stayed in Germany, and how does that work out as a band? And you know, especially when you work on a record together, and it's like, but it's the same thing. I feel like if if you can only do that um, when you're really close, and no. when you know, when there's no question about like you know splitting up as a band or like doesn't make it complicated or weird, you know, in in, no. in any kind of relationship between you guys when you know two of you guys live in a you know different continent. And, and, and no, I mean, for us, it totally worked out. And we concentrated, we concentrated on music, I think. Bill is always into fashion a little bit and, and you know, tries to make some fashion. <laughs> but except that, I think we really concentrated on music and, and progress in the studio and, and um, yeah, and, and songwriting and producing. 
And when you look back at your time in LA, what were your favorite moments and what place do you consider your home? I think now we feel, I mean, to be honest, I feel like I can move to a different country and a different city tomorrow and as long as I have you know, my dog and you know, my brother and my family with me and some friends, I feel home right away. I feel like that that's because we grew up uh, traveling, you know. So, because so I remember Tom and me had our first own apartment when we were 15. So we moved out um, with 15. And then, um, so I, and then we were on the road for such a long time. So I don't know. I feel like I can, I can feel home very easily. Yeah. Right now, definitely, it's definitely LA for us. Um, but that can that can. But change. that really that, that it doesn't have anything to do with um, with the country or city we're living in. It's pretty much just like the house and what happens in the house. You know. But like what we loved house. about LA is that um, yeah. uh, the the freedom. Yeah. I mean, that was really and that influenced the whole album a lot. That that we could just be normal people and walk and be outside and drink a car, just like normal life. And um, and we enjoyed that a lot. Like we for a year, we didn't do anything. We were just just you know having fun and uh, living life to even get inspired for new music. So and I believe that must have been very refreshing. There was yeah. there was such a big difference, and it was so nice. I feel like it was the first. I mean, it was the first time in years that we could just be on our own and do stuff on our own. But um, when you were able again to go out and just have a coffee, didn't it at first feel a little weird? Oh yeah, at first at first you like turn around and you can't really believe that like no one's following you and you don't need a security and um and it still is a little weird. I mean I, I, I'm still a little bit on a paranoid. Like I'm still like I mean I'm 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 more relaxed at home than I'm when I order Starbucks coffee. Like I'm always still a little I don't know. Still, yeah, like, it's a little, un still a little uncomfortable. <laughs> He's socially awkward. Yeah, I'm socially awkward. Yeah. Totally. But when you uh, return to your hometown of Magdeburg now, how does it make you feel? Oh, that feels so strange. I remember the first time uh, we went back and we were uh, visiting some of our, you know, old friends and family, and I, it felt like a completely different life. It feels like I'm going back, like a hundred years. Yeah. It's like it's, it's, like it's crazy. Life. It feels so different and everything seems so much smaller. I don't know. It's maybe because we are so much taller now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's 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 definitely weird. Yeah. A lot of memories um but it feels like a completely different life. It feels like there's so much that happened in between and it did. I mean, <laughs> but, but I, I I think it's it's pretty much the same for everybody. I mean, everybody that, you know, who moved out of of the, you know, home city or a house or the family and, and you know went to another city and started a new life kind of job wise or whatever it's, it, it always feels no. weird to go home and but I don't have that I don't have that connection like I don't have I don't have and I never had that even when I lived there like I never had that connection with the city or the school I was in or anything oh, like that I was never never like cheering for you know my home village or my home <laughs> A city no, no, or my right. school because a lot of people did that and for me it was it, it never felt that way I, I always felt like I'm I don't belong there <laughs> I always felt like I'm I have to be here right now but I don't belong here it's so it was them though yeah we, we still live in Magdeburg yeah. they I still like love it, it. So do you, do you still find a way to connect to the city as well now that you live there? I mean or? all my f family and friends live in there so that's my biggest connection I guess yeah. but but don't you sometimes get the feeling that you have changed so much and every everything and everyone there remained the same um, kind of but um, <laughs> <laughs> kind of but, I, <laughs> but um, we travel a lot so it's always it's for me it's like a place to come calm down and just be with my family and go take a walk with the dog everything is really like relaxed there and for me, for me, it's perfect. Well, now, you know, our age is becoming even more and more digital. And how have you, you know, wanting to hide away a little and get away from everything dealt with the rise of social media? Um, yeah, I remember that in the beginning we were trying or we were not, you know, doing the whole thing at all. Like we had no Facebook, we had no Twitter, no nothing. Um, 
because I thought it, maybe it's it's just like something that's popular right now and it's gonna go away. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like we were. I was hoping uh, <laughs> it's gonna last. Yeah, right? it's, it's not gonna. Be. Yeah. So um, we were not really doing it also to like protect the last tiny bit of our private life. And I, I didn't understand the whole thing in the beginning. I was like, why is everyone giving the last piece of their privacy away? Like, I didn't understand that I didn't that get at anything. All. I mean, I was like, why do people share music for free and yeah. like, all that kind of stuff? I mean, um, and, but now, it, like, of course it changed and we got into it also because you have to. I mean, there's no way around. So uh, we had to, like, confront ourselves with that. And um, and it's it's fun for sure because there are so many you know positive sides because because you have your own like you know media to like connect to your fans and talk to your fans like right away without having stupid tabloids or someone else talking bullshit so you can like actually communicate with your fan base right away which is great so um, I use Instagram a lot I love I love Instagram for me that's the the most fun. Um, Yeah, and it, it definitely has good good sides as well. For I think I think we still have a line like you know some some people post stuff where I just I just can't believe I'm like oh, you know what the fuck. But like so far as there's definitely a line like we don't share everything, but also like we have Tokyo Hotel TV. We like to take our fans on you know our journey and and show them what we do and show them the background and a little bit of our life, um, and and that's fun. Uh, you know, when, when Tokyo Hotel first really, really took off, all those platforms were basically completely non-existent. Yeah. yeah. And are you glad that that was the case, especially considering the privacy that you lost so fast? And, um, yeah, do you, do you think you would have rather gotten famous during the times with social media or without it? Like, what is your opinion? I think it's both. I think, like, in, when we started, like, all these things and MySpace and YouTube and they just kind of, like, started. Everything was so new. So, and we were using that. We, uh, we, we, we started Tokyo Hotel TV and we were starting to use those things. And that was really helpful. Like, people loved it. And, and we were, like, one of the first bands having, like, this daily, you know, podcast and showing the people what we do. And, and, and that was fun. And it definitely helped us. Even as, even before, that as like a super young band to just have a website and you know have all that kind of stuff um, nowadays I feel like it's way more complicated for mm. like you know for like newcomer because there's so many people I mean oh. everyone's sharing their music there's so many songwriters Great. on you I mean to become a YouTube star and I think I, it's I, impossible but now. I, think, I think the whole thing like the whole social media and everything online and that it got so big it makes it more difficult for everybody I mean every performance yeah. you do you have to be super nervous because like I mean like you know 10 years ago we would perform or still seven years ago we would perform in Japan and we know like If we fuck it up here, nobody will know in Europe. Yeah. You know? you, But today it's like if you if, 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 you, if you suck on a, on, on a concert, yeah. everybody will know because yeah. it's it's you know. No, sure. I we do something on stage and I go off stage, backstage, oh, and everywhere. I turn on my phone and it's already everywhere. So it's like crazy. How so it's, fast. it's like it helps. It helps and it, it has a lot of like um, ups and downs. I mean, there yeah. are so many positive things about yeah. it and, and also a lot of negative things. I mean. Yeah. It got way more complex in general, I think. Like, like you know, a couple of years ago was was so different. I mean, we had also like promotion wise too. Like, if you if you have a new record, we would go to I don't know. We had like there was so much stuff on TV like MTV, Viva, you know, Top of the Pops and whatever. Like, there yeah, was so, so many stuff, music like, shows, so many music shows, and so many award shows too. And I feel like it's not existing anymore. Like all the you know channels are gone. You don't have the music uh, TV anymore, and it's uh, everything changed. Like now, you do a lot of stuff online, and and everything goes global right away. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. But you know, this hasn't changed as much as professionally, but also personally. I mean, all those new channels and those new platforms. How do you think, especially for you as as people, not as musicians? How has it changed the way that you that you interact with people, that you favor things, and especially you know that you love, basically, like how. Do you handle your relationships? I don't. I don't feel like it changed at all for me. Did it? Right? Mm. No. Mm. I mean, I don't think so. I mean, Tom is really. I have to say, Tom is like really old school with like everything. He's yeah. he's not like on his phone. He's just texting and making phone calls, and that's pretty much it. I feel like you you don't have like a single app. You don't follow like 
a lot of blogs you're like he's very he's very old fashioned in that that way yeah so. but yeah it's just like I mean I, I want to take the chance by the way and just want to say that you know follow me on Instagram I have an amazing <laughs> Instagram account uh, it's, it's, so it's Tom Carlitz on Instagram I, I haven't uploaded any picture yet but I will if I have enough followers so I, my goal is my goal is like I want to be the guy with the most followers of the band without uploading any picture <laughs> and then like after I reach that I may upload a picture one picture yeah, yeah. okay um Yeah, you know, like, because you got famous really early, really, really fast. Um, do you sometimes feel like that you missed out on some experiences? Or are there even some experiences that you're really, really gra glad that you missed? Um, <laughs> yeah. I, feel like we I feel like we just lived a completely different life than, you know, all our friends. And we still have friends from... Uh, you know, from school and, and people we know from that time and looking at them, it's just like, it's, it's, it's just such a different life and it's, it's, it's crazy. I'm glad I don't, I didn't have to like finish school and study because that was the worst for me and um, I just wanted to get out as soon as possible. So I'm glad I didn't have to like study something stupid I didn't want to do. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that part of, of like getting up like really early in the morning and, and in the rain and going to, you know, whatever school or study or like learn a, a certain job or something like that. I yeah. mean, that's definitely a part like I would I'm have glad, hated and yeah. I'm glad that we missed, missed out that. on that. On and the other hand, of course, we missed like, that's what I'm saying, like Tom is a little socially awkward. Like, you know, so we, are, we were just very like guarded. And we were, you know, and, and we, we also did that by ourselves. Like we were, you know, we just had a small group of people we trust and a small group of people we interact with on like daily basis. We had to take a lot of responsibility very early, which we wanted to do. Because um, with 15, I thought like, I'm so old, I can handle everything. I don't want anyone to tell me anything. So we really wanted to be in charge of everything. But now looking back, I feel like, I should have waited a little longer because, yeah. like, there's, you know, life is yeah, pretty long and you have a lot of responsibility coming your way. So when you're young, when you're 15, 16, you really shouldn't have that much responsibility. So For sure. I kind of, that's, like, something I would say, like, I should have, like, if I could go back, I would yeah, tell my younger... Yeah, like, the careless life. I think yeah, I would tell my younger self to be, like, you know, party and relax and chill because there is so much responsibility yeah. coming later. You can just relax. Um, yeah, but like on the other end, I mean, yeah, we, I feel like we had to like grow up very fast. That's, yeah. that's yeah, just But something. at the same time, we experienced so, so, so many much, great yeah. things. I mean, we traveled yeah. like everywhere, which we, is... Yeah. Uh, but, but do you think the way that you especially handle the internet and all the information that is going on, mm -hmm. um, now like you said, that you're a little socially awkward, you just text, like, do you think you do that as a way to distance yourself from all the pressure that you had as teenagers? Um, yeah, you, you do, you do, I think you do that a little bit, yeah. Um, I mean, I think in like the early stages of our career, we started to not like read everything every day and to read like comments under some you know videos or anything like that so we were definitely trying to you know guard ourselves and have some distance even though it's it's hard because i feel like you know th that job and 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 making music and um it's it's so personal you know you put out your personal um story and your 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 you know art and music and whatever you want to do so it's always very personal But, um, yeah, we were always trying to, like, distance us a little bit and, you know, don't take things very personal. And I think we learned that super early because I feel like with 15, there, were, there was so much hate as well on our band, which was, but it's but just something. Lost a, I mean, we lost a lot of trust in that, in that um, stage of our lives, too. I mean, it was that, like that we kind of, like, isolated us, uh, you know, um, a lot from, like, normal life because we, we found out really early that, that it's, you know, it's, you can't, you can't really trust a lot of people and it's, it's as soon as you say something the next day it's in the papers and it's really big I mean especially when we were young I mean everything was such a big deal it's crazy like every you know every drink we had every girl we fucked I mean you know, like everything was such a huge deal and and so we kind of like um, isolated us to protect us because um, and, and I, I think that's something that you know we still kind of like have Yeah. Even though, even though we try our best to, 
But that that you know that's the that's that kind of stuff that made us socially awkward a little bit, I think, because it happened so early, and that's something you can't really um, control. And especially what you mentioned, like the comments, because I remember, you know, because basically we're the same generation. Yeah. And I remember that there was so much completely unjustified negative backlash, like all the the parody videos, and like mm. basically before I knew uh, Monsoon, mm. I knew the parody video. Yeah. And. But, you know, I think you've proven basically everyone who ever hated you completely wrong because, you know, now you're back stronger than ever. And what would you say to those people now? Um, I think, I don't know. I mean, I have to say that we always also enjoyed that, you know. So I feel like I always... Because I never knew it, like, differently. Like, even in school, we had, like, so much trouble. Like, the way I was dressing on stage, I went to school. Like, there were so many people, like, hating us. And we were always so confident. Sometimes I look back and I'm like, wow, I was 15 and I went to school like that. I wouldn't do that now. Like, that's, <laughs> that's crazy. But we just, I, we also enjoyed that. I also enjoyed, you know, that people hated me. And I like to play with that also. And I think, you know, for our career and for us as a band, it was also a good thing because there was just so much talk about it. And for, for me, it was uh, always better that people have an opinion than not talk about us at all. So um, it wasn't something I was forcing. It was just something naturally, like something that came naturally. Um, What was the question? <laughs> it was like, uh, what would you? Because it was not. It was not just um, like people our age. It was also like people from the industry who were saying like, I don't even remember like really okay, shitty yeah. things. And like, what would you say to those people now? Um, it was. I think mm -hmm. for the second album was super important. I think there was the most pressure, and it was super important for us to prove everyone wrong. And to prove everyone, oh, we we don't just have that one song, yeah. and we're not a made-up band, and we actually can play our instruments, yeah. and we can make music. So for that, for the second album, that was like very important for us. But I feel like we got more relaxed, um, you know, the longer we lasted. Yeah. So. Um, so, like, with the third album, we were already, like, more relaxed because we were touring so much. And I feel like with that album, we didn't have that in our mind at all. Like, we forgot about that completely. Because um, we feel like after 10 years, we, we, di we didn't feel like we had to prove ourselves still. So we were just making, you know, an album we enjoy and the music we enjoy. And, um, yeah, we, we completely left that behind. Yeah, you, you all seem really relaxed. Yeah. That's, that's really, really great. And, um, yeah, but, you know, now we live in an age of, you know, like, born this way and, you know, individuality and especially, you know, like, somebody like you as a person who really, really expresses themselves. Um, you know, 10 years ago this was completely different and now um, I think a lot of your character traits are really, really embraced and welcomed and, and, and celebrated. And, but do you think, not just you, but, like, as a band, do you think this enables you to be more yourself? Um, I always thought for us, I think it was always about being authentic. So I never felt like I had to fit in somewhere and I, I didn't even want to fit in anywhere. Like, um, that's why I hated to go to school and I, oh, we always had our style and it was super important that no one's talking into that. So music wise and, and the way we dress and all of this, like it was super important to be free. I, that's why we never really had a manager telling us what to do or how to look like or people to tell us what kind of music we have to make. Um, so that was always important. That's why we are so different too. Like we don't tell each other what to wear. Like I never go to good stuff and be like, oh, like what are you going to wear today? Like I don't, <laughs> you know, it's totally fine. We are just being ourselves. And, and that was always important for us. So we never really felt, you know, pressure to fit in like a certain like mold or something. But I mean, but still, sometimes you just have to protect yourself, uh -huh. you know? and like, how do you manage that? Like, how do you protect yourself? Because, you know, if you put yourself out there, there is going to be some negativity always, mm -hmm. and you just have to, I don't know, build up, some people put on a mask, some people find another outlet, like, how do you yeah. manage that? I mean, for, I, think, I think, I mean, of course, I mean, there's so much negativity out there in general. I mean, I feel, I feel like it's as you said, like it's, it's more, I think it becomes more easy every day and people are more open every day to individuals and it's, it, it's getting more easy to be, for a lot of people to be themselves. 
But still, you have areas and especially also internet. I mean, there's so much mobbing, so much negativity going on. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody is like commenting on every fucking video and it's it's crazy. So I think I think in general, like we, what Bill said, like we kind of like never had that problem because Bill, I mean, he, I mean, you have no idea. Like he went to school, to school like in, a, in an age, like nobody would have done it. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, he, and what helped I think was that we were twins. Yeah. So for Bill and me, it was, it was kind of like, he always had the cool big brother <laughs> that took care of him. <laughs> so that kind of like helped for him as, you know, that was really helpful for him as well. No, but, but seriously, it's like, it's like we were together. So it was always two of us. We always had like, you know, outside, we always had the same opinion. We were strong, two persons. Yeah. Like even if we, you know, wouldn't have any friends, we would be still yeah. two people, you know? So that really helps. I can't even imagine how it is and, and, how we would be as individuals yeah. if we wouldn't have each other, you know. So it's hard to tell for us. I think I think we it was really helpful and kind of easy together, you know. Like we were really. Strong. Yeah, I think that was. I think that is the protection we have. Yeah. That yeah. you know that we you always you, you never go alone anywhere. So I was never scared of people or people's reaction because I knew I have someone with me and, we and even when we were together like we like we we were you know we were uh, playing live in small little clubs and we were never scared of the audience because it was just the four of us we were never alone and I know and trust me we had I mean we had negative experiences also with the audience and everywhere I mean even when we played in our hometown and we just started as a band we were the youngest band everywhere we were the we only got like, bottles and eggs no, we, and we all were the 10 year kind of old like kids on a stage and we were playing yeah. with bands and they were all like 25 to 30 years old and we were playing that we were 10 years old and everybody hated us i mean everybody was like you know p p people would laugh and stuff like that but we were always like so confident because we were like you know four four guys and it was easy for us um, and we always had kind of like the people that hated us and loved us at the same time. I don't know how it would be if you only have the people that hate you. That's yeah. maybe something different. <laughs> <laughs> you always need, That's you always need to yeah. yeah. love you. need the you. balance. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, of course, I mean, you had yeah. so many fans as well. And yeah, that leads me to my next question, especially you know what you said, like the always sticking together, the protecting each other and the doing what you want no matter what. This has, I think this has helped um, the image of your band to become such a beacon of hope for, for people who were bullied, for people who went to school uh, with, uh, dressed differently than uh, anybody mm -hmm. else. And uh, are you proud of that? Like, do you really oh, yeah. feel like that you've influenced the generation? Because yeah, I, I you have. like when, um, whenever I see that, even today, I feel like now that uh, like we get like a little older, I feel like we realize that more than I did when I was when I was like a, a teenager because I just you know dressed myself as I wanted to like I didn't even know if that I have like any influence on anyone but um, today like when I see people and they um, and they come to me and they're like oh you know you I, I love your style and you know and I I'm able to style myself like I want to because I'm looking at you and you make me so confident and like it's so sweet and so cute I feel like it's the it's just the sweetest thing when someone tells you um, you know, you you influence them or you you inspire them, because um, because that's what we want to do. Like you make music and you do your things, and if if people come and they're like inspired, you know, from you and and they're and then they're fulfilling their dreams and what they want to do, that's the best thing that can happen. And it's it's very cute. Like at the Love Loves Your Back video shoot, I remember we had like a lot of there were a lot of like people there, and I didn't even know some of them were fans, and then they came to me in the break and they're like oh Bill like you are uh, you, you are so important to us and we you know I dressed myself and I started to make music and sing and paint because of you and that's just so sweet and so touching it's like the best thing that you know someone can tell you that's the best compliment you can get but you know but at the same time you can't reach everybody yeah and you know and, and did, does it ever annoy you or, or, or hurt you that you know that somewhere out there is a Tokyo Hotel fan who needs your help you know what I mean but you can't reach them and they can't reach you is that do you feel that disconnect sometimes yeah it's just sometimes I think about that I 
what I have trouble with sometimes is that I think about that I make people sad too. Because sometimes you make them sad. You know, there are some people they like they want to meet you so bad and they love you for so long and then and then they never have the chance to actually see you or talk to you and, and it makes them sad. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't want to break anyone's heart. You know, it's like, and then I'm like, oh, I, I don't want to do that. And that's hard sometimes, you know, when, or sometimes people come and they cry and they only have like two minutes because you have to leave. And that's really touching too. Yeah. It takes a lot of energy. Yeah. And now from the kind of deep to the a little bit superficial, uh -huh. the uh, LA stereotype of like the health obsessed vegan uh, green oh, yeah. drinking person. Like, can you confirm that stereotype? Oh, 100%. Oh, yeah. In LA, it's, it, everything is about, you know, working out, living a healthy life, uh, you know, get the best food, eat, you know, everything that's organic. And I feel like a, in LA, I feel like a junkie uh, from Europe because yeah. because we are so unhealthy yeah. and because we smoke too many cigarettes and we drink too much and we don't work we out and we fast food. So <laughs> it's like we are like yeah. the and we only like we get up late and we like we are up during the night and people go to bed early and it's it's such an early city. Everyone wakes up at six or seven and they work out and they get a fancy drink and. It's like, and I don't, I don't do that at all. So we really stick out. Like we're totally Europeans. It's like way different than what they do there. Yeah, um, but you know, Berlin is the complete opposite. Yeah, think, yeah, you know, that's what I love. About it's it. completely yeah. different. So, um, could you consider like moving to Berlin someday? Um, I would. I mean, every time I'm here, I, 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 I'm, yeah. I, to I, I always say I would totally live here. Um, It's just the life wouldn't be that easy. That's the only thing, yeah. you know? So, um, but like no, coming but I, here I wanna, and spending time here. I want to get a place in Berlin just, yeah. to, just to have it and have something to go back to. And, and yeah. I, I think Berlin is like, it's the city for us in, in, in Germany. Yeah. Like I yeah. want to wanna have something in Berlin and, and, but still maybe like, you know, have something in LA mm -hmm. and just, you know, be there. And yeah, I feel like now home. that we, uh, we don't live here anymore in Germany, I can appreciate it it's much more, more yeah, me too. than, you know, because every, I feel like when you visit places, you always see the good sides and, and the fun part. And then, you know, when you don't live there. So we definitely love to spend time here and, and spend more time here. Yeah. And um, what other places do you love in Europe? I mean, you had that huge concert at the Eiffel Tower. And I mean, for you with the fashion, you must love yeah. Paris, right? I love Paris. <laughs> Paris is so beautiful. I want to live there as well. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I, I want to I live, like, live in every city just to try it out for a little bit. So um, Paris, definitely. I love Rome and Milan. Oh, Italy is Italy great. Is great. Uh, I like so Barcelona beautiful. too. Barcelona in, uh, and and. Madrid, I mean, they're beautiful mm. cities too. I don't know, I like a lot of cities in Europe, it's crazy, mm. I don't know. But did you ever, um, when, when you lived in California, you know, with, I think still at heart, I mean, you were all born in Germany and you know the, the German way and the, the German mentality and did that sometimes clash with, with the American mentality? Because, you know, you're not, I think in, in Germany it's not really common that you go into a store and everybody's like, oh my god, hey guys. Yeah, and yeah, if, yeah, in yeah. LA, it's just like that. Was that weird? Oh Did yeah, you? it's a little weird because because I mean, LA is such a fake city in a lot of ways. So um, it can be very fake, and you have a lot of fake people. I mean, you have them everywhere, so you kind of have to watch out. But LA really sticks out with that. I feel like um, so, and it's a beautiful city too. I I enjoy I enjoy it a lot. I love the city. I love the nightlife. But there are definitely down downsides. I feel like you only realize that when you live there. Um, so, but it's definitely like sometimes you, you def I mean, you, we definitely stick out as like Germans. Like we are, we are never too late, even in LA traffic, you know, we are yeah. so reliable and like, that's like a typical German thing. But that's why I feel like a lot of Americans and people in LA love Germans. In every hotel you have a German manager and in every rest good restaurant you have a German manager. So, cause, cause you know, Germans are very yeah. strict. And my main goal in life is like, I want to have my own country. So I want to. Um, <laughs> I, I just want to make my own country. What's the name for it? I, I don't know. I don't know. You want to create the perfect kind. I want to create like the perfect city that would be enough for me. Like I want to. Well, I want to have a country, and and then and then and then just you know make it perfect. Like like have you know like take the best from every place and. And just saw and this just picture of this island, which looks like a penis. This. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> maybe it would be great yeah. for you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. Tom Kingdom or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and now you're uh, you're going on a big tour, and as you said, your your fans are so important to you. Like, do you have 
a message for out there, everybody watching, and maybe something you haven't said before? Um, uh, I think with that tour, um, we just we're just hoping to have the best, you know, the best and the most amazing time and um, also inspire again because we, you know, it's we, we put a lot of thought and uh, heart into preparing this show and preparing the whole concept. And it's really like we are making this tour because um, of the demand, I feel like, because a lot of people wanted us to, you know, play in smaller venues and create something new and do something we haven't done before. So... Um, we just hope to have the best time ever with them and um, we can't wait to actually see everyone um, you know live again like when we are on stage and they're uh, watching because we haven't done that in a, in a, in a long time so um, yeah we just so we're glad just, to be back we're glad to be back and we're cool. just so grateful we can like still do that yeah okay thank you so so much thank you <laughs> from me was machst du denn Oh. Jetzt bist du ganz dreckig. Ja, ich habe überall Haare und jetzt haben wir keines versucht.